So today we're gonna walk through how to set up a 1997 American Eagle. And uh, this couple right here is the lucky new owners. And this is a beautiful bus. So we're gonna walk them through how to use it. And uh, why, don't, why don't you guys introduce yourself a little bit if you want and talk about the coach and uh, why you're getting into this stuff. I'm Carol Sears and this is my husband, Rick. And we're from California. We flew out here last night and uh, we're anxious to get to know our new bus. Yep. Hot, sunny South Carolina. Go <laughs> yeah, ahead. that's Go right. Ahead. So, well, humid, it's not, isn't it? It's not thunderstorm. You know, it's a nice day, so that's true. we're ready to go. It's a great day to pick up a coach. So let's walk through how to set up the thing when you pull up to a camp spot, because that's where you kind of need to start with. And right now it's actually set up in uh, camp spot mode. The coach is leveled. We've got the leveling jacks down. So do you want to disconnect it? We'll disconnect it and maybe go for a drive. Would you like to drive it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we should crank generator up first. Yes. We'll so run. step one is before you disconnect from power, is if you have your air conditioners running, um, you want to get rid of that load. You don't want to cut off the power while the airs are running. Now, some people do fire up the generator and it's got an automatic transfer switch, so it'll prefer the generator power to the 50 amp shore power. Um, so the generator will take over the load, but even then I like to let the generator warm up a little bit and then load it up with the two airs. So first, I'm gonna go turn off the airs. So here's our air conditioner number one. So this is zone one up in the front here. And as you can hear, it, some of, there's some commands on here we'll walk through later, but for now I'm just gonna go into off. So one more air conditioner control is for zone two, and that's off. All right, cool. We've got a few lights on, but there's no problem. Got Brand new golf cart. Oh, thank you. I tested it and make sure it was good. Battery plug. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's heavenly. Is that good? Like, so, yeah, 12 volt power, the lights, a quick rundown on that is uh, the lights run off 12 volts, so they're just coming off your batteries. Now, when you're going down the road, um, you can have your inverter on, so if you want to plug in like a you know, a computer or uh, into one of your 120 ports or have your microwave and TVs on, you can run your inverter and the engine will supply all your batteries power, which is super nice. Yeah, now if you wanna run your big airs going down the road, of course you gotta start the generator. So after you shut off your big draws, AKA the air conditioners, um, you can come over here and disconnect from power. So I always start with, of course, killing the power and you'll hear a little switch. That box right there is actually the automatic transfer switch. Um, so that will go from your generator to 50 amp. Some of the old school or even much newer coaches, but still low end coaches, when you unplug there, you'd have to plug straight into the wall. But this box does everything. So all you do now is just roll your cord up. And I like to brush it down as I bring it in. Sometimes you can get some sand on it. I mean, this is kind of unnecessary for this setup, the brushing down of it. Yeah. Um, because. But. Yeah, why not? You know, why not? Gloves. Yes, gloves. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know. Go ahead. And you can honestly get gloves for this whole thing because you'll get grit all over your hands, and gloves just make it so much nicer. This <laughs> spot. Now we're always going to do the fifty, right? Yes, yeah, so if you have a spot, you might go to a spot that has 30 amp only. Some state parks only have 30 amp. So what you would do then is get a dog bone, that's what we call them, but really it's just like a, you know, a 30 or 50 to a 30. We've got one right there. You can see it going 30 to 50. Oh yeah. So that's exactly what you'd get right there. Okay. And that allows us to get 50 amp into that. Well, it's not 50 amp, it's still 30 amp. So in those situations, when you only have 30 amp, you can't run two airs. You can only run one. Okay. Yeah, so Otherwise that's- Otherwise it's gonna pop. Exactly, it'll trip it. And I mean, it's not the end of the world if you trip. So if you have a water source at your campsite, which invariably you probably will, you're gonna be connecting right here. So that says city water nozzle. So if you plug your city pressure in there, you can pipe it up through here, which is kind of nice. It's got a little flap. Um, that will give your whole plumbing system fresh water supply. So you can turn your water pump off. Okay. Yep, so you're just using the city pressure to run your whole system. So when you go to leave, you just disconnect it, um, turn your pump back on, and you're good to go. Now- so that's where you would also put a filter. Yes, you could get a hose with the filter. You can, they have those that are just built into the, the hose. And most places have pretty good water, but it, yeah, it can't hurt to have a filter. 
Now, sometimes you'll have a lack of pressure, so you just watch. It just depends on the filter you get. And that's also where you would place your water pressure gauge. Yes, yes, you could do that for okay. sure. Now, um, this is my first time seeing this, so I'm going to take a peek at it. So, okay, nice. We have a black, so this is black and gray flush, so you can flush your black and gray tanks here by switching this valve. Super nice that it has both. Most coaches, if anything, only have the black tank. Um, so what you can do here is once in a while, just you hook a water hose up to it, and then right here it's labeled black tank, gray tank. You can select your black tank, and uh, it'll there are little nozzles in the tanks that will spray oh. out the tank. Oh, great. Yeah, so you can clean it out once in a while, keep your sensors clean and stuff. And then you can also do it through the gray water, but that's... Well, had some pressure in there. <laughs> Thankfully, it's only gray water. <laughs> but that's a little bit unnecessary unless you have some really hard water start going through and you have some buildups maybe. Otherwise, this down here is where you actually dump the two gray and black tanks. So on the left, you have black tank. On the right, you have gray. And there's no need to remember it because you can see the gray has a skinny little pipe and the black has a big fat pipe. Um, so you're going to know which one is your sewer. So you always do black first let it drain all out, close it, then open the gray to kind of flush your pipe out. And uh, typically when you dump, after you dump your, uh, your black, you'll want to go into your toilet and put some treatment in it. And you, you probably researched this, so you put some treatment in it and flush the toilet like two, three times, and you're good to go just to prime it. Um, sometimes I'll even, if while it's hooked up and the black is open, I'll go flush the toilet. It's easier than hooking up a hose. But if there's a hose, you can just hook it up and quickly cycle it out every time if you want. Um, otherwise, these are drains for the plumbing systems, so that'll actually drain system uh, water out of your plumbings, and then if you go to windrise it. So if you okay. plug in city pressure here, or just a water hose, um, the initial, like right now, this is closed, so it's just giving your plumbing system pressure. If you open that up, it'll bypass it and let that pressure go into your tank to Please. fill the tank. This is to fill your water tank up. Oh, to fill your, your water tank. Your yeah, fresh so tank, yeah. So okay. if you're, let's say you're plugged in at a camp spot right. and you're using their city pressure, the pressure, you can come out here if you're about to leave and you want to fill your tank, you just come out here, leave everything plugged in and open the valve up, water is still going in your tank. Okay. So you can fill it up. Okay. And then you can switch back if you're still at the camp spot for another day, you can switch back and continue using their pressure. Is there a gauge that indicates when, your when tank it's is full, full inside? Yes, yeah. you've got that right there. And then you've got one on the inside as well. And if it overfills, there's an overflow. So you'll see it come out of the bottom okay. and you can cut it off. Okay. Yeah, you'd be fine. This would be, you can actually put a hose into a, um, a antifreeze and let the pump suck it into your thing. Yeah, more, most times I just keep gloves for the whole process and then I just peel them. Now right over here, these two are for, it's got a dual zone uh, propane fired furnace system. These are mostly storage compartments. So this does have an inverter. And uh, along with me, you're going to help me find it. Actually, <laughs> so see where your, uh, some of your tanks are up there. They put them in between the, the main frame rails oh, yeah. these coaches, which is a good spot. Yeah. Yeah. They're a little more... Jab them. Right, and they're like this instead of like this, so the slosh effect is not as great, great. when it's moving this small right. distance. Um, mm -hmm. And it, what's that uh, post or... That's the ladder no, extension. No, down. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I'm not sure what this is for. It looks like, a, oh, look at this. Hold open a door. Oh, oh nice. we can hoe. We can, this is go. so you can farm. <laughs> we can do our veggie, veggies. Since yes, you you see what I mean by getting stuff out of motorhomes? Yeah. You never know. Since uh, you're not uh, going to we do need... a pan. There you go. That <laughs> well, is a well, weapon. Well, That's a pretty. For food. Yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> that comes free of charge. Mm, yeah. yeah. Slide this. And I'm not going to do it all the way because that, well. The ladders and no, it's just a half slide out. Yeah, so it's really nice. Lock it. And you want it to lock, yeah. Yeah, let's make sure. Sometimes the grabs need to be adjusted. Where it is. Yeah, that's locked. Okay. And uh, I always, this is just propane. Um, it's got a huge propane. I mean, I see other rigs and they don't have as big of a propane. Yes, they put a serious propane tank in here, which is nice because yeah. more time in between fill-ups. Now, some people, when you when they drive, they cut the propane off. You just turn that knob to the right, like so. That electronic switch right there, that's a little valve. 
there's a carbon monoxide sensor in the coach and I'll show you where it is. If that carbon monoxide sensor is not on, um, it won't let propane come out of the system into oh, okay. your coach. Okay. By the way, we had a really yeah. good rain yesterday is... and last night. I don't know. Really? Yeah, we just did. Flew it. it just, it was thunderstorm yesterday. That's what we heard. The test of the seals. <laughs> we, we... That is an air service line. So you can draw air pressure off of uh, your air system in the coach. Okay. So you can fill tires up, things like that. Okay. In the case of an emergency, if the for some reason the engine doesn't run or the main compressor goes out, which is extremely rare, but more common would be the engine doesn't run for some reason and you need to be towed, they can plug their air um, from their truck into here because how the air brakes work is if you don't have air pressure, they are locked. They're not going anywhere. So, I mean, it's really safe, but if you need to tow it and you can't build up air pressure on your own, the truck can connect in and give you air pressure. This is for the generator slide and that's a little hydraulic pump for it. So you press it, that's a little hydraulic pump. Much better than the electric ones. I'm gonna cut that out of the video because I'm not trying to diss other RVs out there, but you need hydraulic for something heavy like this. <laughs> he did, but let's take a beat. It comes out farther, but I stopped because there's, this is, uh, this is oil right here. That is the coolant and it says on there. Um, that light, That'll give you codes. So there's level one codes, which are just, I think they're either flashes one through nine. So it could be two flashes, three flashes, four flashes. Set, it'll pause and then it'll flash one through nine again to give you two digits. And then you can go and see exactly what's going on. It'll tell, which is really nice, very easy for anyone. You can look it up online to find what the codes mean. So that's really nice. And we can go, you can fire it up from inside and you can fire it up here and if you ever lose power from your generator, just first thing is always come check, make sure that hasn't tripped. Okay. Because if that's off, you won't be getting power. So let's go and fire it up so we can get errors in there. You can get away with that in this heat, but if it's cooler, you'll have to press stop and prime and hold it and give it about 30 seconds to prime up. Um, I really should have done it right there. It would have fired up much quicker. Um, but the prime is a little pump that just pressurizes the fuel line, basically, from my understanding of it. So yeah, if it gets cold, you press and hold that down for 30, 40 seconds, and then it'll fire right up. All right, we can slide it back in. generator runs off of the diesel tank so it's a diesel but um, yeah if it's nighttime in a campground you should have if you don't have power right then you can fire it up some campgrounds if you don't have power they have like a quiet time for the generators um, but most campgrounds you should stay have should have power but if not yeah just make sure there's no quiet time and you can I mean you could literally run this for two or three days just straight I mean, they're they're made to go. They're made to do that. Um, so yeah, you could you could definitely do that. Right. Oh yes, yes. It is your main power source, unless you put some solar, which you could do. There's a lot of room up there for solar. It's pretty sweet. Um, I was sold on solar not too long ago. We had a coach that had a bunch of, it had like, I only had like 600 watts of solar, which is like 900 bucks. And then you gotta get the wiring. And I came, I, I was filming on it and I came out to the driveway. I normally have to, every couple of days when I'm filming, I gotta start start the generator, let it charge up again. I came out there and it said like 13.6 on the volt. I was like, this is great. This is charging itself sitting there. Um, so you could do that for sure. These are pretty quiet. They burn about a gallon an hour if you got a big load on them. So it's not bad, and they're made to run for a long time, so if you wanted, you could run them all day, no problem. If it's super duper hot outside, um, you could maybe come and stick the tongue out a little bit, let it sit out a little bit to get some more airflow. If it's like really hot, you put a big load on it. Um, the guy Jeff, the guy Jeff Williams, um, I'm gonna cut this out. The guy Jeff Williams actually used to sell American coaches. He said they'd recommend that to the, the NASCAR events. They said they're running all day on the tarmac. They'd tell them to stick it out a little bit to get some more airflow. Okay. So, so, uh, it should be 
I can check that. I'm not sure what size it is. Which... Okay, that should be it then. He probably looked at. I wouldn't. Is there a minimum that this not Yes, yes, you're right. Uh, quarter tank is where that level is. Yep. And it might not be exactly at a quarter tank. Every coach has some little variations, but around a quarter tank. So you want to keep it above that. That's, that's how they do it. That's exactly how they do it. Because if you run, if you hit that quarter tank threshold, after you do it, it's so hard to start the generator. You got to sit there and prime in and prime in and prime it because diesel, diesels really don't like to be uh, out of fuel. So yeah, it's always good to fill up before you hit that cutoff because it's annoying to get them back running after that. Another small thing I like to consider, if, if you're in like a really sandy or loose dust spot, it's sometimes good to consider the generator because it will kick that up around you and it'll get sucked in your air intakes and stuff. I mean, it's made for it. It's, I, I like to be very particular when it comes to things like that. But yeah, that's about it. I mean, this is a straightforward thing. Um, so I like to let it warm up a little bit, but now it's been running. This is good enough. I'll flick one air on, let it take that load. And typically what happens is when you flick an air conditioner on, the peak it peaks load real quick and then it backs back off. So it's good to start one, let it sit there for like five, six minutes, and then start the other one. So it doesn't just get hit with this huge load, especially if the batteries have been depleted because then the inverter is gonna be also sucking a bunch of power trying to charge the batteries up. Um, And you can test it out. I mean, every coach, it kind of varies. Um, so you can see if it's not kicking up too much, that's no problem. Um, it depends. If it starts kicking up a lot, then I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's just, you're gonna be in a sand cloud. <laughs> um, it shouldn't be too bad though. So let's see. If I'm not mistaken, the inverter should be back here somewhere. But I could be mistaken. Let's see. Nope, that's your air intake right there, this guy. And then of course the exhaust. Let's see what else we have in here. Hidden back here is your hydraulic system. So if you are, that little tank where it says power gear, um, that's, a, that's the main hydraulic system for the, uh, for the jack system, for the leveling system. So if you ever have a leak or something, you can see it. You, most times- You see it, it's right behind that bay. Yep, and if you have a leak, very simple, you can take the solenoids out, little rubber seal, slap that seal on there, plug it back in, you're good to go. Most times that's what's wrong with them is they have a little hydraulic leak. And uh, some, if you ever have a leak and it goes low, the power gear will say your jacks are down and you'll get out and look, you're like, my jacks aren't down. If that occurs, you know your hydraulic fluid's low because it's thinking that it's extended, but they're not. You've got new uh, coach batteries down below and then you've got your two chassis batteries up top, and uh, those are all six volts, so how they work is since there's four, are these six volts or 12 volts? Six volts, so they're- Look, this is your chassis battery. This is really cool, actually. Yeah. It just comes out of the way, and Reno changed them black. We don't trust Battery Plus doing it. If you hook it up wrong, because there are six volts, so you got yeah, two just... in series and two in peril. Yeah. They make 12 volt. If you do it wrong, you can make 24 volt and bust a bunch of circuit boards in it. Yep. Well, this coach is older, so maybe we walk just one circuit board of your slide out. Um, so yeah, they, you got to take a picture before you change it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and we walked through, through that, but I was I wanted you to explain because you have a lot of experience with this. These amps, the the fuses that we had to replace. I was saying you um, keep an eye on those. Right here, the inline fuse if they ever bust, but that that happens when you have a low. So you got a new batteries. Are you guys gonna have a plug-in at home? If you could put another meter base and pay that and get 50 amp plug-in. Our 07 Eagle we sold it had a 2014 batteries or big bus batteries in our 45 footer. And they were 24, we sold it in 2020, uh, six years old. They were still good. You know why? The previous owner kept it plugged in the garage. It stayed in the, uh, where Essex is. We kept our plug. When you leave coaches plugged in, the batteries love it. Yeah, the inverters are actively managed. When you let them die when they sit around, and then you get them back, back up, 
it'll die in a year or two. They, oh, really? If you keep them plugged, they stay healthy. Yep. Well, and, and I was I was telling him that this friend, I mean, we're thinking of getting the aluminum cover. Yeah. And uh, I said it will only add value to his house. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. Oh, if you do that, yeah, yeah. And you don't have to have 50 amp. I mean, if you get a power, well, if you no power amp. back there. Even if you had a regular trickle charger trickle, on it, if it's, you put trickle charge, you keep the batteries. Yep. yep. And if you put a different type, type of batteries, then you can go in the inverters and switch the type of battery so it knows which one's the man. Oh, you're talking about some of the folks out in California, they get they get trendy, man. They get like... AGM or lithium battery. ion. Like, these are $110 a battery, okay? Like 600 You. You can buy those seven hundred dollars. What they call those lifeline? Lifeline. We can go well, beyond can that. Some solar panels on you can top. Go lithium you go lithium-ion. Yeah. The solar, if the sun is there, it'll keep them charged. Yeah. Oh, that so that coach, another. two coaches down on solar. I didn't even turn the coach power off. It's just sitting there because it's so charging it itself. I think on your video it showed one panel. They probably have it. It's an older. I don't know. They typically, yeah, the old school. They would put like a. It's probably like a fifty amp. 60 amp little small guy the good thing is if it is up there more importantly than that old solar panel that's probably not doing anything it's the wiring, wiring is there so yeah because yeah. that's the annoying part so that's good if it has the panel i doubt is doing anything at this i think point. there are a lot more <laughs> options in your area than here on solar man. yes somebody, oh we do solar yes oh, people go crazy yeah. they put a whole bunch of they, they want to live off grid you can. yeah you can get i mean in theory if you put enough up there and then you got the extra ones yes. you could run an air conditioner off of I mean, that, that's like crazy. Yeah. That's like really, because that's the big thing you need the generator for is to run the air conditioners. One day, yeah, I, I'm gonna have like a bus. Oh yeah, the <laughs> hot sucks. <laughs> you gotta have air conditioning. Yeah, let's do the awning. Real quick though, that is the back of your refrigerator. Um, so you just, you're gonna open these little pens right here and you get to access the back of it if you ever need to. It's a condensation will build hey, up in someone here. someone put a new dinosaur board. Dinosaur is an electronics company out in uh, somewhere, uh, I think Arizona. They put new board. Remember I was talking about earlier, me and Ronnie, I had to go on an iPhone and figure yeah. out how to reset the board. There's a board underneath. Nice. But they bought they bought a new board. That's not a 97. Dinosaur is a company that make circuit board for older stuff. Dinosaur. Why would you name your <laughs> They named it yeah. well. Um, but if you ever have a trouble, ha have trouble with it, uh, you can come reset it, but these are really reliable. The biggest thing that kills these things is sitting around because then all the dirt gobblers start building up oh, in you there. You're gonna turn it on? Yeah, yeah, I'll go turn it on. I'll leave it open so you can oh, watch yeah. it too. You hold camera. <laughs> okay, yeah, go for it. <laughs> it's really satisfying when these fire up because whenever we do a PDI, it's a click. It's like, please come on. <sighs> Comes on. <laughs> if it doesn't, then you edit it. Yep, yeah. if it is, if it doesn't, then we call an our, our Ronnie and I watch him, he'll either do this, replacement, sometimes it just needs an adjustment here. So hear that. Oh, I turned the propane off, I think. Oh, my T. I'll go find it. Oh, that's right, it's in there. Okay, okay, good, good. It's getting scared for a second. All right, I'm skipping the process. I'm turning on, it's right here, so it's out. Yeah, it's pretty I'm straightforward. That's a really hard process well, to do, isn't it? It didn't come in 97 like that. The guy's paying like $2,500, $3,000 to do this. The old school had a pool. He matched the color perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he got the nice original fabric. That's nice. Yeah. We don't know a whole lot, but by being in the mud on base, yep. the condition and what the guys have done it, he loved it. He spent guys, a lot of money, yeah. Money was not an object, he just spent it. Yes. <laughs> that does make a huge difference on these coaches. That's like night and day between an old coach. Yes, I, I typically do. Unless it's a compartment. No, you gotta get the air out of it. No, no, no. Did it try? It tried, it went It didn't even fire. It sounds like there's still air. Were you running yesterday? Unless water is hot because we turn up the electric heat on inside. If water is hot, it won't come on. But it was trying. Well, go try, maybe not. You could try, the, see if there's hot water. Exactly. If there's hot water, then yeah, you're right. The elements are good if you want to run it throughout the day. If you're plugged into power, you can let it run. Or if you're going down the road with the generator, why not flick it on? And uh, it's just an element that sits down in the tank. So you can heat up the tank during the day. So when you turn the propane on, the propane won't actually fire up until you start using the water you've already got built up. It'll save you a little propane. But you can actually, you can leave it on alongside the propane as well, just to assist a little bit with keeping the 10 gallon hot. Yep, water is hot. So your electric mm. water heater has been working. 
So when the water is hot, it's not going to let that thing. So I turn the water, electric water heater off. Oh, we'll turn it on later then. Okay. It's not, well, it, won't, it won't come off. It's got a sensor. But we'll, we'll make sure. We'll yeah, we'll fire it up later we'll again. I'm getting hungry. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I am too. My daughter's bringing up. She goes, you want me to bring some food? She can't bring the food here or should we go out? It's Shade. So you see those switches? If they pop out, that means they're reset button there. Oh, okay. 25, 30 amp. That's 50 amp input inverter charge. It'll pop out. Set, reset them. So they're having an inverter on the vehicle, so what do we need to um, use it? So, go ahead. Okay, so, yeah, so what this will do is it'll take your 12 volt battery power and give you 120 power. So it'll essentially power up all your outlets, like your regular wall charger outlets. Um, I say wall charger because that's the only thing I can think of when it comes out. <laughs> um, your TVs, your microwave, all those systems, except for your uh, air conditioners, just off your battery power. Okay. Now, the thing to remember is it will draw a lot of power because you're just sucking battery power into your 120. But if you're running your engine, it sh the engine will be keeping those batteries up. Um, so that is a super nice system. This also acts as your main charger for the coach side batteries. So that thing will keep your coach batteries charged up when you have generator power or um, shore power. It's given, like right now, that generator is supplying your coach batteries power. It's a 2,000 watt, so mm -hmm. it's not big, big inverter. You can have some of those 2, big, Prevo, big Prevo buses. Like 8,000. They have like a three forty eight hundred watts. You can right. <laughs> like heavy duty. Yeah, but that's, you know, 2000, I, it was big. Our, I, we sold a Winnebago View that had an 80 watt. 80 watt, yeah. Our RV. <laughs> yeah. Ronnie's on his way. You know yeah, what he calls about inverter? Ryan. Yeah, Ronnie's on his way. He's got to work on a Monica Windsor. He goes, Why well, have inverter? Push the button. You got a generator on. You know, generator prov provides power for everything. But it's a charger, there's too. A, there's, a, there's a plus and minus. Like if you if you run around, Oh yeah, he'll be able to crawl under. Oh. <laughs> he'll be able to crawl. Yeah, <laughs> this stuff. No, you look. I had to crawl up under this thing when it dropped down. Oh, you're, you're you'll be able to get TV, under. Right? The trick I do. What do I do with the passenger window, Mayan? Leave it unlocked. I leave the passenger window unlocked. I always so do too. If you ever get out and the door locks, which oh. has happened to me. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, he's oh. talking about like leaving one of the window. Like we used to send Mayan through slide. the window in the cold. One of these because you can slide it. I always do that. I never trust those electric locks. They lock on yeah, you. <laughs> no, it no, doesn't have an electric lock. Dude, that one in Florida I got down there to pick up? Yeah. Close the door with the big diesel running? <laughs> oh, God, I can't get in. That was a newer motor. So that's on the video, right? Yeah. 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 Don't forget, you got to be careful in some of these southern states. They got that sign on the road, no six-wheel vehicle in the left lane. They mean it. Yeah. They mean it. DOT can pull you over. Oh, still on your right, man. Ask you Mongo saying? Slade here what happened when he went flying by me in an RV and oh, the yeah, police. Cool. I'm caught. Telling the police, that's when they brought out the dog and everything. They brought the dog out. That's all. Yeah, he was flying. He pulled me over for flying. I've got pulled over twice in the motor. Police car following him with blue eyes. I said, "Chin, the police behind you. Where?" I said, "Man, you need to pull over." Hey, what used to be 60, 65? That's when you get the best fuel mileage and less stress. That's cut out. Yeah, it's cut out. Chin didn't want to come out and hurt. He's in there moving cabinet drawers, and the cop got suspicious. What are you doing inside? Why had to call some there? No, I had to call the dog out. Then the guy who brought the dog knew you. Yeah, <laughs> it was you. Yeah, you bought a car for me. How the heck do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here sucking all this in. I said, oh, God, they're going to tow that RV. <laughs> yeah, it was right by the airport. Uh, I got cool. one over coming out of Louisiana. When I'm coming back from Texas, and that big one, I'm going up the highway at night. I went to adjust the radio. I kind of weed. Uh, Louisiana Highway Patrol. Blue light. I didn't notice the blue lights. I looked in the camera. Whoa. <laughs> I had to go like two miles. I finally pulled over, undid my seatbelt, opened the door, he came in, he said, you all right, sir? I said, yeah, I'm fine. He said, I saw you. I said, I went to adjust the radio. I must have drifted a little bit. Well, I thought maybe you were sleepy or whatever, you know. He said, this is a nice coach. I said, yeah. He says, you own this? I said, God, no. Look, he said, mind if I can look? Come on in. He 
came in, looked through it, <laughs> shined the light, I said, man, it's kind of tight in here. I said, well, these walls go out. All this goes out. Well, I, I, it was something nice. There's a 12S. You're yeah, coming from Texas. Bucks, yeah. One California was coming back. California yep. guy went to Texas <laughs> yeah, yeah. and yep. you got yeah, here. Yeah. Him. You got pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, you wanted to check your thing out. Yeah, I didn't want to see. Yeah, they didn't want to see. And then one time I ran out of fuel when I turned, it was a Monaco. Turned into the gas station and ooh, I coasted up to the pump. How lucky could I get? <laughs> I'm standing there getting like $300 of story, man. <laughs> Here comes the SUV. Cop gets out, we make eye contact. How you doing? We look, man, that is a nice RV. Mind if I can look at that? Sure, help yourself. When I put fuel in them, the door opened. Yeah. So here come four or five more of his buddies. They all gassing up. He, yeah, come here, look at this. They all inside. He says, man, this is nice. A little crowded in here. I said, oh, guys, they turned the switch and the button, the wall went out. I said, oh, man, this is nice. Yeah. Because, you know, when you get diesel, I park way out. And I look yeah. to make sure I have enough room to let it out. I let the slides out. He says, Picking up gas, watch you, and we're going to train you. To an orange pole or yellow pole. Yeah, when you turn it by the gas pump, the safety pole. When your rear wheel yeah. pass, that's when you can turn it. Yep. If you start turning your poles here, you yep. have insurance damage right I there. Do that <laughs> Watch your I height. I did that in that port. Oh, yeah, because it's long, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember, you have an air conditioning unit on top. Well, that's what I was good. That's that GPS we got. Yeah, you can put your parameters in. That's yeah, good. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I, he's got that's a good. good. Yeah, you want to watch it. I've been taking down wild goose watch. chases. Yep. Watch your height. <laughs> yeah, or that. Yeah. Hey, Ryan, that was two you know trips. What's up, Ryan? Old GM looking key is the ignition key. So you stick a key in there, turn it, and don't crack it. You know, diesel. Have you had diesel in the past? No. So what do you do? You turn it on and just come halfway. And all these, just come halfway a little bit. Yeah, that's it. See what it says here? Wait till it starts gone because it's hot day. Go ahead and fire it up. Fire right up. So the sound you hear is for the low air PSI. And your air is right there. Yep, it's at 60. It needs to be about 100. It'll get up. So uh, this says, I saw another one that said air oh, over here. That's air. That's not that. You know, that is not that. That's a, that's your PSI. oil presser. That's your oil presser. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, that is your air presser. See, it said 30. So it got a front and a rear. I don't know which one is what, but white and red represent air system front and rear. You could rave it up just a little bit. Get it about 10. There you go, just a little bit, yeah, a tiny bit. So you see the red light here, it says jacks down. Right. So don't take off or you'll bend one. So it's got a three level jack system, one in the front and two in the back. Oh, it was really, one in the front. yeah, because what happened years in 90s, they had a four jacks and people pop windshield out. They'll twist the frame. Oh. So the one jack in the front and two in the back would give less twist in the front. So some. Some had a system like that, just three, I think. So, see, the presser has been built to Almost about. 70. Yeah, it's good, but I would not take off. Like I said, uh, uh, we're going to see something else outside. I'll show you. So, uh, slide is out. So wh what is it supposed to get up to before? About 110. Oh, okay. You want to, well, he was saying 120, 125. That's, I'd say minimum 110. Okay. Like, if you take a air uh, operated vehicle uh, test, like a, on a DMV test, he'll say you're supposed to be 110 before you move. Okay. 110 is minimum. He said 125. More is merrier, but 110 minimum. Right. So it'll, it'll gradually go up. And um, what you could do, we can get the slide in. Let's get the slide in. And then I'm going to put the jacks up. Well, you want to finish here. Let's oh, we can finish this. here. So AC. Yeah, that's good. So that's normal, just yeah. like car. Yeah. Cool, hot. Vent is pushed down. So the vent's pushed down. The yep. Is on. And the bi level, I think it's a floor defrost recirculation. Let's see if this works. I'm going to check that out. We'll put a cigarette lighter and check it out. It works. May check a fuse because you're going to need it for uh, your yeah. GPS. Well, a lot of the plugs are different nowadays. You know, you have to have a plug into that. Oh, there's one here, too. So you got two outlets. Yeah. Well, we'll check it out. Yeah. 
So let's see your tilt telescopic. You see this? Lift it up. Lift to telly, I think. So it's a what? Push to telly. You can push it down. That'll be telescopic. See, it goes up and down. Now pull it up, straight up. Pull straight up. Yep, now it's telescopic. Or not, a tilt. I'm sorry. Pull to tilt. That's your privacy curtain. So you let it run just normal. You don't have to. Let's see. That's your docking lights if you're going to be working at night. Those are your fog lights. The hood lights if you need to get under the uh, generator. Luggage lights. That's your. Well, this fan been deleted because remember the older motorhome had a. He put this nice wood. So those two fans are deleted. Okay. Auxiliary start. Let me let me tell you. Let me take my little time to tell you. So you saw the battery system. You saw four coach batteries, six volts. They make 12 volt. And then you got two on top that swing out is a chassis battery. Let's say you left your headlights on. This is the older coaches. It's not going to turn off. It's not smart. You left headlights on or halfway lights on at Walmart. You stop. And next morning, you're trying to crank up. Wait to start light. Come on. You're trying to crank. Well, if you were running generator or didn't have a bunch of lights on and didn't run generator, your coach batteries are still strong. You can hold that auxiliary start and crank it up. So what it does, it's kind of like you have a two different... It's a jump in the system, like you got a two different system. So your house is cranking your uh, engine. Okay, so you just hold this down like you crank, and crank it up. Okay. Also, vice versa. Let's say you somehow you had parked at your friend's for a while. You come up and uh, you're trying to crank generator up and it didn't. But your engine cranked up. You hold the auxiliary start and then push the generator start. Because generator starts with your coach batteries. And when generator runs, it only charges those four new batteries that we have, house batteries. When engine runs, it charges all six alternators. So if it was parked somewhere for a while and your generator didn't come on, then, then crank the engine up and use an auxiliary start to crank your generator up. Uh, and other stuff like air. So look, push the horn. It should be air horn. Hit the air horn. Now hit it. So that's you know if you somehow you're going through a, a golf community or something you don't want to. Or, I like air horn. <laughs> now let's see. Radio is up and down. So dome lights. It's here. It's right here. I think. Right. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yep. So pretty much self-explanatory. That's your uh, uh, toll pane window down. Oh okay. Okay. Yep. And that's your mirror adjustment, left or right. Go left and see if it works. Yep, it works. So and just, the bottom mirror is a manual. Okay, so go, right. okay. Now go to the right. Check that out. Yep, it works. Let me tell you what. Little stuff like that amazed me on older motorhomes because I've, I've, we've been in the motorhome business 21 years, and I tell you what, stuff don't work. You got to put motor or fuse could blow out. You know, it just amazed me how many stuff works in this coach. There are a couple of stuff that don't work, I'll tell you, but it's not nothing, nothing gonna stop you to drive or camping, you know. So for this, on the top mirror, it's uh, powered, but the bottom, bottom is uh. Right, but the bottom part of the top mirror should that be about halfway? The bottom, you should be down be behind your a front rear wheel. I mean, front front passenger wheel or because that's a blind spot. So if it was a low Ferrari or Corvette's coming up, you don't want to make a burrito out of them. You won't be able to see. Well, I'm talking about the bottom mirror. The okay. top mirror, you could be, yeah, you could be wherever you're comfortable. Just like a regular car. Like the bottom of the slide out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Yep. Now, you know the backup monitor. So uh, it's on on, but if you turn it off, it should be on. Put your foot on the brake. Let's see. Hold it and put it in reverse. Jacks would probably go nuts. Watch. Jacks are going nuts because, hey, where are you going? Put it back in a neutral, but looks like cut off. Now, let me show you real quick. So you got back in the park, right? And we did not release the emergency neutral, brake, right? So. so let me take you out of here and show you something, what's happening right now. So where is park? I've got neutral. It's a neutral. That's it. There is no park. Well, oh, there is no neutral. Park. No neutral, and your emergency brake is up. Let okay. me show you something real quick outside. What's happening? So we retracted Jack. You see up here, 
it's still gonna go up higher. Now look at the back. You see, it, this thing gonna come up about here, that yeah. high. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about. What we did, we put in a reverse. And Jack said, whoa, 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 you can't move my Jackson down, but you had your foot on the brake, remember? Right. Now, if you didn't have a foot on brake, you bent one of those shafts about a thousand apiece. Now, with inflation, 1250 bucks. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it, you'll, you'll be able to see it's gonna gradually go up, but we'll keep walking when we come back up. This thing would be another three inches higher. Well, so it's still continuing. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. So I know I kind of, I'm ADD. We got off of that. I wanted to show you this. Yeah. Because what we did by putting a reverse, Jack said, hey, we're coming up. So when Jack comes up, Motorhome said, okay, we're ready to drive. So I need to air up the airbags. And that's what's faulty, not working. Remember the adjustment? That's why I told you, don't come. Because right. I wouldn't let you drive. Look, look at here now. Oh, it, it's, yeah. Oh, if you start driving like that, you'll run like a rodeo. So when we leave the campground, you need to make sure it's high. It'll go another two inches or three inches. But is that the is that the way to do it? No, 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 no. That was emergency That's purpose. You 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 hit. Uh, let me go back and I, let's carry on. I just want to show you that how that works. I know it had the jacks. Button. Yeah, you just turn it on and say retract all. Okay, okay. But because we're putting a drive, it's got an automatic uh, safety feature. Whoa, 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 whoa! You can't go nowhere. Let me get the jacks up. I mean, it's pretty instant. It would not let you bend. So, in a usual thing, you would turn it on, see jacks down, lights gone, because all three jacks are retracted. And um, I'll show you, one of my appliances guy came to my home to fix something. He's got a really nice knee thing, I got it. You know, I put my knee on it, and I kind of look under it. Oh. You need to buy one of those, or yeah. just something, you know, like spongy oh, yeah, thing, they yeah, sell them. Thing, yeah. yeah, 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 so you get down to your knee and check it. Once the jacks are up, you turn it off? Yeah, yeah, the jacks, jacks down, lights off, but what I'll tell you, well, we'll, before we take off, when we get slide in, put the cable back in, we'll visually <laughs> make sure all three jacks are up. Okay. Now, what happens, I'll tell you, remember I was telling you get two by uh, eight by four or something and put some stuff under the jacks right, right. so they don't overextend right. themselves. I'm pretty, I mean, I've got detention pond that side, so motorhome is leaning this way. Can you feel it now? It's leaning. I had it leveled. Let's, let's show you how to level it. Okay. Then we're gonna do it. Okay, so turn it on. This is a good one. Turn it on, okay. You see those two yellow lights are right. indicating the rear needs to get up and left needs to get up. Oh, okay. So hit the left. Now watch, as soon as you turn it on, you see coach is going down? Yeah. They say, oh, okay, just like the emergency procedure, they say, oh, you're going somewhere. Okay, so I'm, I'm redoing it. Jacks are down, so we're doing re rear. Even though the light's still on. Yeah. Shouldn't that light go off? So what'll happen? Jacks down, okay. Jacks are down, well look, you'll feel it a little bit. In in the back when it hits the ground so two jacks in the rear are going down as soon as they hit the ground you'll feel it oh you feel it now yeah. you have hit the ground Boy, i'm going slowly i'm pulsating huh yeah that took a while now let's do the left you could do back and forth this so even though that light comes on jacks down it doesn't oh i mean it's it's so last night i did it a little slower ideally you see the rear lights going off that's okay we're enough let's see if on left this green light would come on. It'll tell you, sometimes you can get a bubble. I don't totally trust that, you know. Maybe I need to get a front, because I had it leveled here. So I'm doing the front one now. Let's see if the front one comes down. I want the front to hit too. That's the front and just hit. That's gone. See, this is what I'm talking about. We need some wood because uh, the, ex the the level has it, it has gone out all the way. So if okay. you had extra, there's a green light in the middle come on. Last night I had it level, but it looks pretty. It looks pretty level, doesn't it? I mean, it's not leaning that way now, right? Right. right. So a lot of time I go by. Oh, my kid, they can tell you story on our eagles. After I set up, I'm not happy. I'll do it, Daddy. What are you on? It'll just make all you know the bumps like you were feeling yeah i will not be happy till i'll come out and open the uh i'll open the microwave see if it's not going back or i'll do it my okay i think it's leveled now, <laughs> now um, those feet that you can attach to it's yeah you've seen those big rubber foot but even then you can do that that protects your foot 
but you can still put the uh, like a one like, by eight. Yeah, yeah, one by eight or two by eight, or you buy them those plastic ones. Yeah, they're 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 up. You can buy them at uh, Camping World or online Camping World. Yeah, yeah. So so what we're gonna do? Let's get the slide in. I think I think you got. Let's see. We did the mirrors, headlights, oh wipers. Let me show you wipers. So push that in. Look, even you got the windshield wipers works. I mean, I'm talking about the uh, fluid. Uh, the fluid works. So that's how you do that, and turn the outside knob to turn it on. Go this way, more. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, I screwed up. That's your. That's your. Um, what do you call it? Inter intermediate. intermediate. Yeah. So turn the middle knob to the right. That's one speed. Go. I've had customer bought it and they were in the arena. I said, "How do I turn it on?" And yeah. I had to FaceTime them. I said, "You know." Yeah. So that's how it. Okay. Now this is pretty important here. Yeah. Now he's got a brake controller if you're going to be towing a boat or something like that. Yep, it's off at 12 o'clock. Your headlight is simple. Yeah. Um, but you, it has fog lamps, right? Yep. And so, is it best to just at night? I turn them on. on yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I turn them on all the time. Okay. Okay. You do have a heat on a mirror, you know, if you okay. wanted that. Okay. So here, this is your pack brake or jack brake, jake brake. I like mine on all the time. Exhaust brake, you know, is additional, like when you go up in the mountain. When you're in a city, you can turn it off. It's exhaust brake. Never had one? Never used it? No, you'll feel it. When we go on test drive, we'll go test drive, you'll see it. Okay. Uh, ICC, it stands for Interstate Commerce Commission Light. So when you do this, let's say 18 will pass you by, and it's got like a two football field. I said, come on, come on in. You just hit that, and it'll flash your headlight. Okay. Or you pass them, and he gave you high beam. You do that, and it, it tail light flashes. Said, thank you. Okay. It's the light you see them 18 wheelers right. use. Yeah. So is it just push it once, and, and it, it does it multiple yep, times? Yep. Yep. Oh, you, you could do it like it? you could do that a couple okay. of times. Yep. Okay. That's your cruise set acceleration. We're gonna use that on the highway. Also here, if you're in a high, uh, on the mountains, you could you hold mode down where well, they won't come in. Put your well. We're gonna do it again. That emergency procedure. Let's not do that way. Let's let's say we're tracked. Now let me tell you something. Uh, we're not that bad. Campground or something. They tell you operate your slide when you level, but it's not that bad. So right protocol to do get the slide in before you retract your jacks oh, okay. or. Extend your jacks, level the coach before you extend the slide. Okay. It's better on the seals and stuff. So let's get the slide in and then we'll come and retract the jacks and we'll continue on here. So jack, your slide's here. Oh, I thought it was right up here. Oh no, it's oh. right here. Right here above dining table. No, no, right here. I think it's in this one right above. Oh. Bingo, I was right. So off and on, if you have grandkids, they're going to mess around with the slide out. Off, hide the key somewhere okay. if you want to. Turn it on, set in. And you're making sure, you know, nothing's in the way, coming in, just hold it. Just hold it. No, you gotta hold it in. Oh, okay. So you gotta hold it in. Oh, okay. So it's coming in. You see the water leaked out from raining last night? Yeah. So the slide out topper is doing its job, it to hold the water out. And you know, another good thing is it rained last night here a lot. No, no water leaks. Yeah. So uh, that's a good thing. When you said slide, I was thinking the slide out here, the awning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we got to get that in too. So, so we'll that's that. Off. And here, we'll come back here, but that's your inverter interface that turn off and on here. Uh, so like my RV tech is here, it'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, that's inverter control. You can turn off and on. And this is your black tank is empty. LP is one full. Uh, gray tank is empty. These are your main batteries in good condition. Auxiliary, which is your coach batteries. That's what Fleet would say. Auxiliary is your house battery, mains are engine batteries. A solar charger, I don't know if it's hooked up or not. But uh, So that's your monitoring panel. It'll tell you fresh water, what's your level, and all that. I think somebody took this off somehow. Oh, okay. It was probably here somehow, or they were going to install it. Yeah. It's an old school. It stays up, but this guy bought it. He was going to do it. Yeah. He just haven't done it yet. You need to have those hinges so it'll stay up. Yeah. <laughs> of course, the only time you need to get in there is it's to get the slide in and out. Yep, yep. So, where are the books and records? Did we go through it? I think it's in what? Maybe 
It's here? So we got the slide in. So let's, uh, we'll go to the books and, but now I'll show you how to retract. So I told mine, you know, it's idly, you want to get your slide in before you retract your yep. jacks or vice versa, before you extend your slide, level the coach first. All right, so now, here we go. Go ahead and hit on. You want to take over again, mine, and no, retract. No, I'm about to take off. Where are you going? Oh, you got to pick your customers, yeah, pick up. customers up. So hit, retract. Boom, you feel it again, and it's gonna do the same thing with that air. Air was released, it's gonna fill back up. Yep. Oh, you don't have time to go eat? We may go eat. Yes, it'll, it'll stay. It'll... This gauge is the one that air, you air have bags. to focus on for the, uh, the suspension, right? Yep, yep, that's right. And there's two of them. He's lifting up, looking in the front, he's coming up already. Yep. What's well, good, his jacks are going down, and now you can see that it's actually started to. They'll go down for a second because now Cause they're letting it, the air into the bags. Okay. Yep. All right, yeah, I gotta go get the paperwork, freshen up. Oh, you're gonna bring a 97 too then? Yeah, I'm gonna get all that stuff. So I'll be We're probably gonna go eat somewhere. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, it doesn't line up for me because I gotta go get those. You got another customer. This all is right. good. We're I'll busy right now. What? Yep. See you when you get back. All right, sounds good. Have a good test drive. Thanks. Yep. All right, so. Cockpits are so they feel like a cockpit. <laughs> yeah. It's like American Eagle. So now back to your cruise control is here. We'll check that on test drive. So and now go ahead. Since we're getting ready to leave, uh, do I turn off this? Your jack downs the red light is gone. That means all jacks are retracted. But like I was telling you, get some knee pad or something, get down to go see. Visually, I do that. My RV tech said, <laughs> If that says gone, they're it's they're up. But I don't know. I'm I'm one of those guys. I want to double verify because they're right. up. They are up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. It, it would not have came up. See how it came up after Jacks came up. The air yeah. built coach yeah. back up. So yeah, yeah. I've heard people and and, and driving away and the Jacks doing that. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know it's just now put your foot on the brake. I'm going to show you something about the transmission. All right. We still have emergency brake on, so we're not going anywhere. But on top of that, you got your brakes depressed. Man, I meant to... Go Sorry, ahead. I don't mean to. I meant to steal your X30. Sure. Yeah, I don't have anything in there. We have our two suitcases. Oh, we got to get their suitcase out. Let's get that. I'll grab it out for you guys. 